<laughs> Our guest in this next segment is Brian Moody, executive editor for Auto Traders. We find out 2023's best new cars on the list. Brian, welcome back. Great to have you on the show again. You're on with Rob and John and John, which should be easy to remember, I think. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Great to talk about these cars. Yeah, let's talk about it, man. Let's get to it and tell me what's on the list of 2023's best new cars, Brian. Well, we have a list of 11 cars in a variety of sizes and price ranges and all that kind of stuff. So we have normal stuff like the Honda CRV. It's redesigned for this year, and it has uh, some extra features that maybe, you know, would be worth looking into. Hell descent control, snow driving mode. Um, it's practical and it's utilitarian. That's kind of what those do. But we also have something like the new BMW 7 Series. That's BMW's big, full-size luxury sedan. It's about a $95,000 car, and many people who drove it, many of our editors said, quite honestly, it's just spectacular. 31-inch screen in the back with 8K resolution. Um, this is a gasoline-powered car. Excellent in every way. And then another car that's on the list that's kind of surprising to me even is the new Toyota Prius. And I know what everyone's thinking about the Prius. You're thinking, why are they always in the left lane? And why does the car look so dorky? <laughs> yes. It doesn't look that way anymore. <laughs> I know, that's what you're thinking. Yeah, man. But this year, it actually looks, it's a huge improvement. It's, it's, I would actually say, and this isn't a stretch, it's now a good-looking car. It's an attractive car that you would pick because you genuinely like the way that it looks. Much better looking outside, much better looking on the inside, more fun to drive, and even better fuel economy than before. So it's still a hybrid, but now you can get as a plug-in hybrid or as a, a typical gas hybrid nearly 60 miles per gallon when you get just a regular gas-electric hybrid. So that's nice. pretty good. When it comes to the Prius, it's a short step to a huge improvement. So that, that's Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you, Johnson. <laughs> Well, and especially, I mean, the, the electric it's cars. It's true, with... but, you know, they did overdo it. They did go beyond just, hey, let's spruce it up a little bit. Like, they went beyond and made it I, to the actual point where you would say it's attractive. Now, Brian, I don't want to – this isn't intended to get you into a political discussion, but the rarest sighting of all – is a Prius with a Trump bumper sticker on it. And I saw one of those. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <Just> one. <laughs> a few years back. <laughs> sure it didn't have a big X through it? No, it was legit. <laughs> Keep on going with your list, Brian, because I don't want to get you in trouble. Brian, I got a quick question. Well, I think oh. Prius owners come. Yeah, go ahead. Is there, I, I'm looking for a full-size SUV, like a Suburban, something big. Is there a, a full-size SUV that is a hybrid? Just out of curiosity. That's not really a thing right now. Um, you may be able to find a BMW that's a plug-in hybrid, or you may be able to find an all-electric, like the new Hummer EV comes as a, or will be soon coming as a uh, as an SUV. The Rivian has a full-size, um, you know, uh, a full-size yes, I, version. Of I'm an SUV oil, version. I'm an oil and gas guy. I'm a West Virginian. Um, but I was just curious if they had that. I mean, I would think that there would be, there might be a market for that. Well, we tried that. Remember, there was the Tahoe hybrid, and there was a couple others like that. The thing about big full-size SUVs, the reason why, and, and this, and this, this is again, like you said, this isn't intended to be a political statement. This is just the reality of where we are. The good thing about electric cars is that they offer the consumer's choice. Look at Ford for just an example. If you want an electric pickup, they have that. If you want a gas-powered pickup, they have that. If you want a diesel-powered pickup, they have that. Same thing with the Mustang. You want an electric Mustang? There you go. You want a gas-powered Mustang? Here's that. So having electric cars alongside gas, it turns out the gasoline-powered trucks are the ones that are best for things like towing and hauling and long-distance driving. We're still not there with electric vehicles just yet. So an electric car would be good for around town, and maybe if you have a Tesla, you can go on some long-distance trips because they have all those dedicated chargers. Is the Speaking of Teslas, I, I read something a couple of days ago where they, they're markedly dropping the prices of some of the new Tesla models, and it's infuriating people who already have Teslas because all of a sudden they paid something and, and their, the value of their cars are, are plummeting because of that. Right. So Tesla did lower prices across the board um, on their lowest price models, and there's a reason for that. 
they marked down some of their less expensive cars to begin with because they wanted to comply or have the ability for the buyer to comply with the new um, Inflation Reduction Act guidelines. So some of those stipulations are, and, and I think this makes sense, that the car should be priced under a certain price level. You don't want taxpayers funding people buying $100,000 electric cars when they can full well afford it on their own. So there's a price cap, and that makes sense. So Tesla said, hey, some of our cars don't make that price cap. Let's lower the price so that we can get there. And turns out it stimulated more sales. And then more recently, they dropped the prices of their more expensive models. And I think with Tesla, they're just such a different company. I think one of the reasons they did it was because they can. And they also know that there's more competition coming. Brian, I know you got enough, still more of your list to get through, and then you've got to get on to your next call. So go right ahead, sir. Yeah, a couple more cars on the list are the new Nissan Z. Remember, they brought that back. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks a little bit like the Z from the past. It's about a $39,000 car, but 400 horsepower V6 with a turbocharger and a manual transmission, something we like. Also, there's the Kia Sportage, which is available as a gasoline-powered uh, SUV or a hybrid. So, again, choice is important. Uh, we also like the Hyundai Palisade. That's a mid-sized, three-row, gasoline-powered SUV, probably one of the best you can get in that category. And then this is just, I mean, maybe, maybe you can't, you know, replace a Suburban with this, but I bet you can sure try. How about the new Chevy Corvette Z06? It's a $100,000, 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds, V8-powered, 670 horsepower two seat sports car. Oh Maybe goodness. you should get that instead of a suburban. <laughs> well, I'm I'm six seven. I might be able to get into it, but I don't know that I'm getting out without assistance. <laughs> it's a lot of height. They'll have to roll onto the ground like those guys do sometimes. <laughs> Brian, great stuff, man. I know you got to get rolling. I, I bought. I have a CRV. I bought new in 2011, right before they changed that generation over to the new one. And now there's another new generation coming out. And the CRV I have, it's it's a, it, right. it's you. I mean, it's 300 something thousand miles and just keeps on rolling, man. These things are built to last. Right. They are, and that's on our list as well for the new new for 2023 Honda CRV. Yeah, that was. I think you let off with that one too. So hey, thanks for your time, man. Where can people find out more about uh, Auto Trader? Yep. For more information on buying and selling and advice, go to autotrader.com and you can type in slash best cars and you'll find lots of lists of the best cars in specific categories. And these are our best for 2023. Thanks, Brian. Always appreciate you on the show, sir. Thank you.